Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. I'm excited to welcome back Suzanne Giesman, who first told us her amazing story on episode 104, almost three years ago. Now, the author of 12 books, radio show host, teacher, and keynote speaker, Suzanne shows people the way to peace, happiness, and freedom from the ego. A former U.S. Navy commander who served as a commanding officer and aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, she is a medium and today provides stunning evidence of the existence of universal consciousness and our interconnectedness. Whether in her books, her classes and workshops, her radio show, or her one-on-one sessions, Suzanne brings messages of hope, healing, and love that go straight to the heart and illuminate the light of self-awareness within. You can meet Suzanne this year, 2019, in so many different places. She is going to be in Washington, D.C. with our friend Suzanne Wilson, getting to know our spirit guides. That's July 13th and 14th. She will be at the Omega Institute with her own workshop, Messages of Hope, connecting with loved ones and guides across the veil. She and I together, well, we'll be speaking at different times, but we're both presenters at the IANS conference, August 29th through September 1st. That's going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and IAN stands for the International Association for Near-Death Studies, and at the fantastic brand new Soul Summit Scottsdale, which is September 12th through 15th. And I recommend you visit for more information on those things at her website, which is SuzanneGiesman.com, and you'll find so much more. She's now got online workshops, videos, meditations, and a great documentary film about her called Messages of Hope. Suzanne Giesman, welcome back to We Don't Die Radio. Oh, Sandra, it's just so obvious why you have such a great show. You're very smooth. (laughs) Thank you for that intro. Oh, you're very sweet with the smoothness. I care and I am a listener as much as I am the host. And I tell you, since I mean, it's been a long time since I've interviewed you. I know I've seen you, but my my life has transformed, transformed with these episodes. So to be able to give that away and talk to great people like yourself, it just makes a huge difference in my life, too. Well, it It's been a pleasure for me to meet you at various conferences. I remember the first time I saw you in person, just just feel this big heart opening and and you just know right away why you do this work. Oh, thanks. And you've certainly come a long way. And I spent some time on your website. I'm like, holy cow, this woman's been busy. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm excited to catch up. And some of our listeners, this might be their first um, episode. And would you mind just uh, giving a recap kind of who you are and how you got into this line of well, sure. fantastic you, you, things? You did. You summarized my Navy career, 20 mm-hmm. years, uh, retiring as a commander. And really, it was such an honor to serve at the highest level, being the aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who's the head of the whole U.S. military, gave me a window into how our military operates and meeting presidents and kings and queens and congressmen. It was quite an eye-opener and an exciting time. But, you know, my husband and I just went back and visited a naval base in San Diego this past week, and it showed me how far I've come because that is such a a different world than the one I'm living in now. Now I know there's another world that we walk in two worlds at once. It's really just one world. That's the key right there. It's Mm -hmm. just one spectrum of awareness and by shifting our focus, we can become aware of the greater reality we're part of. But I never would have even spoken that way back when I was in the Navy because I had no idea I would one day be a medium. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it came about as the result of, unfortunately, the death of my husband's daughter, Susan, my beautiful stepdaughter, who was a sergeant in the Marines, was crossing the flight line at Cherry Point Air Station in North Carolina and was struck and killed by lightning. And she was six months pregnant at the time. So it was a huge wake-up call for me and and a call to discover if it's true what they say, that that death is just a transition. And boy, have I found out that is true. 
and have gone on to speak to thousands of souls who have crossed the veil. And because of my left brain background, my military background, I need evidence. I need proof that I'm really communicating with these souls. And boy, do they give it to me all the time. That is the best. And you're such an inspiration. And I tell your story to many people just because um, I guess of your past and how you have the skeptical mind and you needed to look at, for that proof. And then you yourself got involved with mediumship, became a medium, became a teacher, so much more. And I know once I got a little taste of this, it's just, I had to give it away. I had to share because of the impact yeah. that yeah. it has. That's right. Because Ty and I, my husband, Ty went to a medium after Susan passed I'd heard about these people that could connect across the veil, but never really had a reason to visit one. And that one hour changed our lives. It changed my whole worldview. I had no choice but to believe that Susan had been right there in the room with us from the incredible evidence that that woman brought through. So what a gift that was. And I thought, if I can write books about this and then show people this is real, I can change people's lives, never realizing that in writing the book, I would uncover the ability to do so and go on to teach others how to do so. What a ride. Uh, what a ride. And I can't believe you're up to 12 books now. That's pretty awesome. Uh, 13. <laughs> oh, well, let me say 13. <laughs> yeah. What's your latest? The latest one is called Droplets of God. I love that title. And it's a biography of my my mentor in mediumship, Mavis Patilla, who's been a medium for over 50 years. She's revered around the world she for is. her beloved teaching. And her story is so awesome. It reads like a novel. And the title Droplets of God comes from what the term that she uses to refer to these thoughts that those in the higher dimensions put in our consciousness all the time. And we often mistake them for our own thoughts. But they, when we listen, they lead to these magical, wondrous moments of connection and insight. That's so interesting, because I, I've often wondered, every so often I have these droplets. <laughs> and I, it's, my, <laughs> it's my own voice, though. And I think many people might feel their loved ones or hear a voice, and then we just easily blow it off that it's got to be our imagination. It can be in our own voice, these thoughts. Well, gosh, 99.9% .9 of the spirits who speak to me in my readings come through sounding like my own thoughts. The only people who have ever not sounded like my own thoughts were my Susan, my father, and my friend Brenda Baker, because I knew them so intimately. Oh, and my mom, <laughs> just yesterday. And um, I, I think, I believe that it's very challenging for those across the veil to recreate a frequency that sounds like their own voice to our thoughts. So it's much easier to just use our own thoughts, but it's their thoughts. Ultimately, the teaching that I share is there is only one mind with a capital M extending itself through all of us having these experiences of, of interacting. Uh, so learning to discern the difference between our own thoughts and those of higher consciousness can be a challenge, but it's all part of the journey. And we are all on that journey. And, you know, I remember the last time I saw you at a workshop, you gave us each one of those um, pictures, you know, when you cross your eyes and then one picture arises out of the other. Yeah. The 3d magic eye. That's yeah. it. It's a <laughs> an and I, excellent tool i love that moment when everybody goes oh because this heart of roses jumps off this 2d page but it's 3d and the analogy the reason i use it is that this is like the greater reality we're part of all it takes is a shift in focus not literally with the eyes but with your consciousness and this other reality that's right here jumps out and reveals itself i actually keep that picture yeah. next to my bed just to remind oh, me cool. when I wake up in the yeah. morning. <laughs> and and I love that what jumps out is a heart because the heart is the bridge. We go straight within to that connection point right there that connects us to any reality. There's not just another one. There, there are limitless realities that we, that we can play in. Well, I didn't know that, but <laughs> no, maybe I did know oh, that. Consciousness. 
consciousness is limitless. Yeah. And so we call a reality one one rule set. Our world certainly has its rules. We have gravity with time. Mm-hmm extends itself linearly in the spirit world, different rule set. But that's just the reality that's immediately after this one. I'm sure there are many other realities. There's the mythological realm. You can tap into that and get evidence from it. I just happen to focus on the spirit world most of the time, but I've certainly dropped into other realities. Uh, It's just a matter of what you're drawn to. It makes total sense. I think I just concentrating my awareness on this life and talking about the afterlife. Right. But it, right. it Me too. makes total sense. <laughs> I, I mean, and I don't think our human minds can understand the greater reality. If we put it that way or explain it, I talked to so many people who've had near death experiences and there's no words to it, share the whole entire thing that they experienced. So I don't know if we're meant to. That's the key right there. They experienced it. So we can't understand it. We set the intention to have an experience of it. I wanted to experience my Susan's presence. And it led to so many experiences while sitting in a state of meditation or expanded awareness or out in nature that have left no doubt in my mind that we can experience altered states of consciousness that lead us to real experiences. hate to repeat the word there, but that's, that's okay. what everybody who's listening should aim for is their personal experience. Cause I could share stories for days of evidence of greater reality, but there's nothing like that personal experience to know I am so much more than this physical body. Well, I think that's important because so many times, especially me being on my journey, I thought I had to go to a medium and not knocking mediums because I love mediums and going, but it doesn't mean that your loved one is only there when you're on the phone having a reading or you're seeing somebody one-on-one. And I, I, you know, so I've, I've even heard from so many of my listeners you know, can you get me in touch with my loved one? It's like, they're right next to you. They're right with you. And what would you say to that? Because so many people, as you know, who either come for reading or listen to this show, they're really looking for just something to give them some peace, some little bit of healing through the grieving process and a sign that their loved one is around. And not everyone gets some kind of a bold sign, even though some do. Right, right. And it just, Read the literature from people who are in this field and you'll learn more about the way those in the spirit world send us signs. There's a timeliness to them. There's a a catch, a snag that you can't ignore it. So that's one thing about signs is learning what to look for. It's not just that a butterfly flies by. It's much more than that. But as far as connecting ourselves, that's what I'm going to be sharing at my workshop at the Soul Summit in Scottsdale and at uh, at Omega, a way to clear out a belief that may be blocking you that your loved ones are right here and then get into an expanded state and actually have a conversation with your loved ones. My mom passed last August and I've been telling everyone I'm a medium and I haven't heard from my own mother. I visited her immediately after her passing and that was satisfying Of course, she was okay. We all are after we passed. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to have a conversation with her. And my most recent interview on my Messages of Hope radio show with the Dr. Marge Britt uh, got us to talking about these conversations across the veil. And I realized I was expecting too much from my mother. I wanted her to give me evidence of things I couldn't know from another loved one, which is silly. But that's just, that's the box that I was in. And I realized, just let go of that and start talking to mom. And she came to me and with no evidence whatsoever, at first, it sounded like I was making this up. And just as Marge and I discussed on on that interview, it morphs into our loved one telling us things that we wouldn't have thought of and things that we need to hear but didn't know And so it's a matter of just trusting this will happen, sitting down and having that conversation, inviting them in and starting by asking questions and seeing how it flows. Very great. And I'm a little bit um, 
I don't want to say sleepy. That's not the word right now. But I was just on your website and I did the guided wow. meditation with Jim <laughs> Oliver. And thank you for posting meditations for free. Um, but it just made me, like you say, have a question in mind. And it just put me in such a fantastic space sitting up clear I wasn't sleeping but definitely tuned out uh and yes they, you, you might say spacey but I yes. I think a better word would be in an expanded state of awareness well I was in an expanded state of awareness Suzanne <laughs> <laughs> don't drive heavy, don't operate heavy machinery for a little bit after that yeah don't get you right know, on I, a radio I, I, call <laughs> Yeah, I have good news for you. One way to get grounded is to eat chocolate. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> well, how about that? That's funny. No, I'm. I'm. I was just teasing with all this, but uh, the whether it's a meditation like that. Could you talk about quieting your mind? Could you talk about? Oh yes, getting into yes. the zone because I think that's a practice that be well is important for us because I know we don't die, but we want to make sure we have a a good life while we're here. And that's such a asset to be able to key to our finding peace. Uh, I somehow intuitively knew, and it was probably a droplet of God after my Susan passed that I needed to quiet my mind to be able to tune into her. If she still existed, of course I found out since then, of course she does. But the problem with most of us before we start down this, this path is that we're, our minds are always going and they're so focused on this physical world. We're either focused on the past or the future or somebody here and now or our own issues. It's always either me, you, past or future. Instead of just going to this place of spaciousness and seeing what comes in, we have to learn to create openness in our awareness to tap into pure awareness from which everything arises. So that's why so many sages talk about practicing presence. And I used to think, why do I want to just do the dishes and say, I'm doing the dishes? It's because (laughs) in focusing on what you're doing right here, right now, your mind isn't wandering off to the past, the future, me and you and all those issues. If you're just present with taking this bite of food or or looking at that tree. It may sound boring, but that's training the mind to create openness. Spirit is trying to talk to us all the time, and we just don't hear it because our minds are so busy. Holy cow, are they busy? Yeah. Absolutely. And it definitely is training. And I can't say I have a regiment for exercising well, that, but... I can definitely well, notice I have the difference. One. Yeah, go ahead. Have you have you do you know about my hemisync recordings? I don't, but I oh my saw gosh. that on your website today. Yeah. Unfortunately I can't give those away for free because no. they're produced by the Hemisync company. Right. Mm-hmm. But Hemisync is is a technology where specific meditation music or or guided meditation is overlaid with binaural beats. Mm -hmm. There are many people that use specific beats. I know that um, Eben Alexander and Karen Newell have wonderful sacred acoustics recordings. This is uh, a similar thing. It's everybody can try different things and see what works for them. But the theory and it works is that these beats are set so that they bring the left and right hemisphere of the brain into a synchronized state. And when that happens, you're radiating coherent brain waves. Coherence is the key to connecting with higher consciousness. And Hemisync says it's kind of like training wheels for meditation. And I was so pleased when they invited me to do a mediumship series. And I said the very first one in this series must be the training ground. Because that's how I discovered my ability to connect across the veil, by training myself to recognize the alpha brainwave state of expanded meditation, and then at will to drop into the theta brainwave state of deep meditation, where 
you really have some cool adventures in consciousness. And if people go to the HemiSync site and just read the feedback from people who have used these recordings, all of which the scripts were dictated by my team of guides, who we call Sanaya, the, the feedback is way beyond anything I ever imagined when they asked me to do this, because if you thought the radiant heart meditation got you spacey, uh, buckle your seatbelt <laughs> for, for the other ones. And it provides a systematic way to train yourself, program, reprogram the brain to be in that open, expanded state so that we can better connect with our loved ones. Mm-hmm. And it works. How many audios are there? Well, there's a, it's a two CD set. Two mm-hmm. CD set, three recordings on the training ground. The second one is called Building the Power. I believe that's two long recordings. And then the third one is Working with Your Guys. <clears throat> Another two CD set. They also come in MP3. Mm-hmm. But like I said, they that my guides, I sat down with them, got into that very expanded state that we're hoping to help people get into. And I said, please give us the perfect scripts that we need, the narration. And I just turned on my tape recorder and channeled them. And it's funny because the Hemisync people usually go back and forth with their narrators, tweaking the manuscripts that they send in. Mm -hmm. Not a single time have they changed a single word on any of my scripts. And I know it's because they come from the higher vibration. That's pretty neat. I remember Hemisync back in the day, I experimented with the CDs and as great as um, opening up my consciousness may have been, I also noticed some day-to-day differences. I remember I had a very stressful thing happen to me. And instead of me going into the usual panic attack, I don't know what to do. It was like, I was smooth, very systematic. And it's just like, I saw it and here we go. Boom, 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 boom. And everything worked out fine. But it, it was in that moment when people even around, around me said, who's this Sandra? This is not how you know, but we be a, and it That's can do so much. Absolutely. And I'm sure to our stress levels, to our health, all of that. That's, That's pretty- the beautiful benefit of this path for any of us. That was the first thing I noticed when I, I, my initial goal in meditation was to connect with my Susan. And while I, that didn't happen immediately, which is a key point for everybody listening, I did notice that I was more calm throughout the day. I was more peaceful. I reacted differently. And then I started knowing things. That was the intuition coming back online. Oh, that's very yeah. cool. Suzanne, this is kind of going to be a dance, this conversation, because I want to catch up. Oh, I, I know it. what you want to, you know, <laughs> what want to hear what you're doing and, and all that. So just thinking, well, where are we going to go next? And I, I know I read in your introduction, freedom from the ego. Uh, yeah. If we could talk a little bit about that, because I think we all have this inner voice that is not our champion and can get us to not trust, not believe, be highly skeptical. I don't want to try, loaded with fear. Uh, Can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, yes. This is the whole spiritual journey. If you could narrow it down into one sentence, the spiritual journey is shifting from identification with the ego to identification with the soul. Beautiful. So when you realize that there are two aspects to us, the story, which we call the ego, the Suzanne story, the Sandra story, and then this light being who doesn't need a body who is the embodiment of peace and love and joy when we realize that these there are innate aspects of our self that we're drawn towards love and joy and peace because that's who we really are at a level beneath the ego then we start paying attention to the voice in our head and when it's less than loving and when it's frantic and have to and must and should and has all these ego voices, we Mm -hmm. say, wait a minute, there's a better way. I know there's another aspect of me that has nothing to do with this ego. And that's the part that doesn't die. Do we have to catch ourselves in the act when we're going down one of those ways of thinking that's not so positive? You don't have to, but we don't have to. Does it help? (laughs) (laughs) When you do catch it, 
And that's when you do that little 3D shift, like the heart of roses that sits beside your bed, Sandra. That's when you say, okay, let me tap into the soul. And it's just this little shift. And you go to the heart, and then you can shift even higher and ask higher self, what is the best response for me in this situation? And it's stunning how we get guidance and come up with better ways to react than the ego's old ploys. Mm, and that's why I'm grateful I just did that meditation because you get to ask a question. And uh, I, I just, I'm so proud of you really knowing you. I, I mean, not that we know each other well, but yeah. the Suzanne that's in the world right now with all you have to offer and your love for humanity and the difference and just the more things you're doing and the more things you offer and how much further you've gotten out in the world. I'm so proud of you. And you're an inspiration <laughs> for me too, that uh, Suzanne's doing it. it I'm doing it. it. It's just that once you feel this love, that's mm -hmm. our true nature. Once it cracks through that shell of the ego, there's no holding it back. Sometimes I, I laugh and people laugh at this visual, but I sometimes I just want to spew it all over <laughs> everyone. The love, you know, you can't hold it in. And it's also this sense of assurance that no matter what happens, I know how to find the peace and it's not outside. So it doesn't matter what happens in my life. I can remain peaceful and hopefully help others find that place. We all have this ability so that's why I I just feel this urge to keep creating. We're all co-creators. And so if that's another book or another meditation to help people, I it's it's my passion. Mm -hmm. And people I know that people listening, they want to know what's my purpose. Everybody wants to know that. That's right. Just ask yourself, just ask yourself, what's your passion? It, mm -hmm. so you don't have to change the world. Just shine your light. And your life will flow. I said that already. I can be a broken record sometimes, but it's so simple. And we miss that sometimes. Mm. How about if we're deeply grieving? I don't know mm -hmm. if it's so easy to just turn up the joy. Yeah. And I, I know this show yep. attracts as yeah. why I got into it in the first place was to ease the right. grief. So the reason they're listening to this show is because their soul knows there's something more. And we don't like that feeling of grief because our soul knows only love and is trying to draw us back to that place of peace and love. The quickest way to come into a coherent state is gratitude. So even when you can, you don't even want to live another minute, you can always find something to be thankful for, even if it's that you had the love of that loved one who's no longer physically present. Then just start reading works by people who have been where you've been. Keep focusing on gratitude. And when the grief threatens to overwhelm you, catch it and say, that's love. Just saying that brings you right back into the heart gives you that impetus to keep going towards the light for just another few minutes. And this is when, having connected with the heart, we just trust there is higher power that's pulling us forward, that's guiding us, that's always with us. And you ask your questions of that higher power. What is going to get me through this day? Send me someone to help me. And on it goes, just like that. Ask and you shall receive. Without a doubt. But you must believe there's something more. If you don't, you're putting up your own roadblock. By grace, at times, gifts will come to us when we don't believe. But there is always that little nudging, that tugging in the heart. Follow that. Ask it. What are you trying to tell me? What am I supposed to do next? And then keep your eyes open for whatever snags your attention, whether that's a book some television show, a radio show like yours, Sandra, whatever grabs you, then just keep pulling that string. It's an ongoing string of pearls when we follow it. Yeah. And that's our journey being human too. It's, I, I personally think that out of my darkest times came the best thing that I have now. If I had not experienced the death of my dad, the way he went, 
suffered terribly with cancer, the breakup of relationships within my family and that would yeah. have never put me on this journey to investigate grief and more about the afterlife and then to share. And so although crappy things can happen and they feel horrible and we don't have the answers, it is my greatest faith that if we use that as getting us on our spiritual journey and yeah. things that we can look back a year or two from now going, oh my gosh, that if that didn't happen this way, I couldn't have exactly. done this. And the beautiful part of mediumship is once we know that your dad is fine and I know that Susan is still with me and we can talk to them, that changes everything. Then, then we see through our own growth, the purpose in this whole life is just remembering that the, the the illusion that the spiritual teachers talk about is that we are ever separate from each other. That's the illusion. One, this is such a beautiful journey we're on, but it's not without its bumps. Could I tell you a little lesson that I was given Please. about the bumps? I was out riding a mountain bike with my husband on a nice, easy trail because I had been knocked off balance. I, I think I did several workshops in a row and I was just tired and and I, I said, let's just go for a nice, easy bike ride to recharge. And so the trail started out all slowly, and it was beautiful and curvy and, oh, wonderful. And then all of a sudden, we hit these roots and these rocks, and I'm getting jarred around. And I said silently, this is supposed to be relaxing. And I heard this booming voice, and it said, it's a mountain bike trail, for God's sake. <laughs> and I started laughing out loud. And, <laughs> and the bigger lesson, of course, is we expect life to be all flowy and wonderful. We look around and there are people that are successful and their life is so happy and so wonderful. And then, But we're going through these challenges and these trials. And that is life. This life is like that. You're absolutely right, Sandra, that it's from those bumps and those valleys that we learn. And as we climb out of them, we can teach other people, this is life. And what are we going to do with these lessons? It's not why did this happen to me? It's what can I do? What more light can I bring into this world as a result of that challenge? There's a great part in the movie, I think it's Bruce Almighty <laughs> with Jim Carrey <laughs> and Morgan Freeman plays God and I think Jim Carrey wants courage and, and someone says uh, uh, God says, Morgan Freeman um, that they don't give courage you give opportunities to be courageous and so oh, nice. life represents all these opportunities and there is a reward on the other side of risk there is our yeah. dreams fulfilled outside of our comfort zone. And it takes something. Well, courage is another one of those innate aspects of the soul. If we are fear filled, that's ego. If you recognize that, then and set it aside, just trusting I am a soul, courage is naturally there it just emerges it's it's amazing how it happens people say where did you get that strength well we didn't get it it's part of who we are mm. you know i'm e smiling e e go ahead yeah go ahead well i'm just smiling because i feel like we're catching up but there's no way to catch up because there's so much and i'm i've got my page open to your website and i'm like look at all these online classes she's got now and it's just a way, not that I'm trying to sell all your products, don't, but, you know, I've never been one to sell, 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 but it's, I, I can't. And I'm not either, but why do we put them out there? Because they're helpful. They're That's helpful. The and yeah. I know if I didn't have this radio show that when I go a few weeks without recording an episode, I can get very caught up in the day-to-day -day life and totally yeah. forget yeah. that I have a soul and everything. And so it's just really nice to see that you help nurture and expand ourselves through what you, what you're doing. I'm like, 
So I'm just well, that, excited. That, that is the key. We get so wrapped up in our human focus that uh, that some kind of daily connection is mm-hmm. so important. And and yes, I have you know my products. I charge for them because there are certain expenses with having a staff and the website and all of that. Absolutely. But I do try to balance it out with those free meditations and the daily messages from my guides that are free and uh, right there on my website and on Facebook. That's just a beautiful way to be inspired daily and feel that heart connection until you start getting your own daily connections. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on the subconscious? I know so many times, like whether it's guilty thoughts while we're grieving that I should have done this or, um, Oh, I think, I think it just kind of, it's habitual to just live a mundane life or can be. And That's it. You, you got, you hit the nail on the head right there. It's habitual mm-hmm. and it's just programming. But once you feel the joy that comes from this connection with the higher self and that, experience generally comes from sitting in the silence sitting in okay and only five to ten minutes a day i'm not talking about becoming some guru and meditating (laughs) for an hour a day nobody has time for that maybe some people do but um once you feel that peace then the best recommendation i can give is to make a commitment to yourself to practice awareness of your thoughts because they, we become like little robots and the same patterns repeat all the time. So I get myself a little reminder. I have one of those little uh, rubber wristbands. I've created several of those and I'll wear that on my wrist. And when I look down and I see it, I'll say, oh yeah, have I connected with higher consciousness lately? Am I paying attention to my thoughts? And you just catch those thoughts when, or you catch that tightening in your gut, whatever doesn't feel good. And you say, What's a more positive way to look at this? If you don't know, you shift your focus higher and ask, help me to change these thoughts. We never do anything alone. We Everybody has a spirit guide, at least one. So ask them to help you catch your thoughts. Help, ask them to help you reprogram your whole way of seeing the world. It's It's such an empowering path once you really step onto it. And I don't, just speaking personally, we've talked plenty of times about spirit guides, but I'm not living my life as if I've got uh, daily help and a daily partner (laughs) that's just in the unseen world. Mm -hmm. And forgive me, listeners, because I know I talk about it a lot, but personally, I haven't. So how can we use that? And do we have to know who they are? Do we have to know details? Or can we just trust and build that relationship? You don't. I would say trust, but we do love to get signs and validations. Mm-hmm. And so I play with my guides that way all the time. I've never seen them other than a, I saw a light, their light, uh, literally 3D in front of me dancing around and moving. So to, to think that your guide has to look like a human being and have a human name mm-hmm. is just human thinking. Right. But they will show up that way for some who need it. But I'm not visual in that way. So I asked them, what shall I call you? And they gave me names. And so then you can play games with them. And all of this takes place in those few moments of meditation every day. I'll sit and I'll thank my guides that I connected the heart. Oh, on YouTube, I have a video. You can search for Suzanne Giesman, Connect Across the Veil in Seven Steps. That will take people to my seven-step process for connecting with higher consciousness, such as your guides. And at the last step, which is, it's a, it's my method that I call the bless me method. I, you were in my workshop where I taught that. So it's now free online. The last step in bless me is E experience. It's during that phase of experiencing the presence of a guide when you can ask questions like, um, how do I know this is you? Can you give me a repeatable sign? Like my guide twitches my lip. I can't even create that twitch and it just happens. Wow. And it's so validating for me to know, okay, they they want me to pay attention right now. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to pay attention to? And then ask the first sign. All right, you gave me the name uh, Rose. 
give me a sign in the next couple of days that that really is your name. This really happened to me. And the next day, my husband walked in the door with a dozen roses for me. No <laughs> holiday, no special occasion. I said, why did you bring these? And he said, oh, they just spoke to me. You know, <laughs> it That's becomes cute. an interactive experience. And I love you say play games. This is, I, I would imagine people around you, guides around you, or around me, or around you, the listener, were love, loving, caring, fun people, that they have humor and they have love in their hearts and that there are best friends cheering us on, wanting us to oh, yeah. be the most successful we can be. Yeah, but. It's, it goes back to be as the child, right? I mean, I may be this retired Navy commander, and I can certainly mm-hmm. be serious if I need to. But I'm like a kid, ageless, you know, and and look at little kids playing. They're not worried about what other people think about them. They don't have fear. If we can be like that and just have a spirit of playfulness as we enter into meditation, look what's going to happen today. Let's mm-hmm. see who shows up. You know, that invites in this beautiful light and magic happens, but it's not a trick. It's magical. That's great. I have been making a practice recently, uh, tuning in just recently and talking to my dad. And I didn't do that too much. But what's happening now is before I fall asleep at night, it's almost like a little slideshow I get that I'm not looking for. It's not like I say, okay, dad, I'm going to bed. I'm not even thinking about dad and these pictures of him Mm -hmm. at different ages and some that I didn't even know him as when he was younger, before I was born, just kind of appear. Pictures that I can look at them. It's not like I'm creating them with my imagination. So that's when I know, okay, you just put this here. This is not my imagination creating this. Yes, and and see, that's how it shows up for you, and it will be different for everybody, maybe like that, and then it'll change for you again in the mm-hmm. future. But we make the mistake of saying, well, I've already seen that picture. I'm making that up. No, it's the you're not even thinking of it, and they're coming in randomly, being put there by your dad. How else are our loved ones going to communicate with us? I think people expect they're going to appear at the end of the bed, Mm -hmm. We're going to see them and they're going to talk to us. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. And I'm sure some people have had that, but I don't hear too much of that. It's more coming in our dreams or as I was driving, I really felt my grandmother was with me and trusting that that is her. That's not just your imagination. And then knowing that they're trying very hard and acknowledging those efforts and talking to them and saying, thank you so much. Thank you for visiting me, honoring them in that way is wonderful. The gratitude is so important. I'll never forget somebody said this to you. If you have your old Aunt Mildred and she's sending you a birthday gift every year and you don't say thank you, you won't get any more (laughs) gifts. (laughs) So it's not about receiving the gifts so much as being grateful, being in communication, acknowledging the experience. Because if I'm your daughter, in the unseen world, and I'm picking up that you're hearing me or you're getting these. I I know f- I would like to play with it. And what else can I do? What else can happen? You know, I love you as much as you love me and keep that yeah. relationship alive. I'm not going to lose yeah. my sense of humor and my sense of creativity and my sense of wonder. Oh, they don't. They don't. They are creative and funny and still as sentient and intelligent as they were when in a physical body. And why not? Because we are conscious, sentient beings. It's interesting. My teacher, Mavis Patilla, whose book I just wrote, said something in her class that I pass on in my classes now, because it's so important for anybody doing this work of communicating across the veil is to represent what they say accurately. Because Mavis says, you don't want to get to the other side and have a spirit come up to you and say, Why did you tell my loved one I said that when I didn't say that at all? Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've heard some things come out of mediums' mouths that I think, oh, that's your mind. That's not (laughs) somebody in this world. Yeah, I have too. I have too. Yeah. Wow. Let's talk a little bit about your online classes because you do offer 
mediumship in person. And then also you have online things as well. And then I'd love to hear about your other things you offer. I do. I have two two courses of basic spirituality, Let mm-hmm. Your Spirit Soar and Your Emerging Soul. No particular order that they would go in, but really for those who are new to the path and want some excellent practical tools and how to understand the kinds of things we're talking about and how it is that we can connect across the veil. I've done my best to put that in very simple terms. And I believe that's why people like my mediumship class as well. That class was filmed and it's now the course making the connection on my website. People love it because when you take the course, you feel like you're in the class and then you can sign up to do practice readings with others who are taking the online class, but it's self-paced because it's a video course. It's not live, but I've, I've heard people say I've been studying mediumship for years and I learned more in two days with you than with any other teacher. And Sandra, I know that's because I have not been seeing spirits my whole life. It only opened up for me about 12 years ago. And from the beginning with that left brain military background, I needed to understand how does this work? Mm -hmm. What is going on here? And I really narrowed it down to processes and tools and techniques yet bringing in the balance of the right side, intuitive side, merging the two. So it's this beautiful balance of practical teaching and un- and understanding at an intuitive level how to tap in with the non-physical senses. So I'm really pleased at the feedback that I get from people that were hitting the mark. Yeah, thank- and thanks for doing it at a reasonable price too. I'm There's lots I want to do and sometimes price really is a issue. And so, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's important to me that people can, can attain it. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it takes something. Yep. I remember hearing when my book first came out, you'll find Sandra, when you give away books, most often people don't read them, but when they make an investment is when they do. So I do think there has to be it's interesting. <laughs> an exchange of yeah. money there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, lovely. Mm-hmm. And you still do readings and work with people one on one? I do, but unfortunately, that wait is up to four years now. Oh, that's my goodness. With having goodness. so many, because I'm out there and people mm-hmm. read the books and they do the meditations, they hear about me more and more. And I can understand wanting to have that reading, but uh, I can't keep up with the demand. Yeah, of course not. You're one in a million. You're one in seven billion. So actually. that's why we. <laughs> That's, that's why we, you know, instead of giving a man a fish, teach him to fish. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. So you're teaching and you're sharing. And can you talk a little bit about Sadaya and your daily oh, God. teachings? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I have some sessions online on YouTube where I have brought them through mm-hmm. in channeling sessions. Oh. And they, they just keep getting more and more profound. Uh, Sadaya is my team of guides. Uh, really, it's just higher consciousness. All of it is. And that's mm-hmm. what Sanaya's teaching is about, teaching us who we are and why we're here. And uh, the daily messages always teach us ways to find peace and and understand the deeper truths about this world. So I love the energy that I feel when I tap into that. And when I teach my classes, they always teach with me. And I know it must look a little odd, but sometimes they'll they'll grab my attention and I'll look up to the left and then shift what I was saying because they want me to say it in a different way. It's it's really a fascinating process. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. And the first time, didn't you write a poem or something like that? I'm oh, yeah. I remember that story. Right. My memoir, Messages of Hope, begins with that poem where I was sitting in meditation and I and I was brand new on this journey and somebody who is very connected said, your guides are going to do something magical with this week. Just be ready. And I was ready. I had pen and paper just in case something would happen. Maybe maybe I'd hear a message. They gave me a three-page poem with perfect beginning, middle, and end, rhyming words, perfect stanzas, all about the fact that I would be doing this work, and it flowed in under 10 minutes. I was crying because I knew I hadn't done that, and they picked a really good way to let me know do you get this? You are not making it up. We are here. Yes. And they never have gone away. You know, they don't go away. We, we, we are not alone. 
Wow. Yeah, beautiful. I don't know where to lead on this dance quite yet. We have just a few minutes <laughs> left. We can talk about what's upcoming for well, you, what you're most passionate about. You lead the... What, what, my I would like to talk about how it, it was brought to my attention that everything that I teach can be summed up in just a few short phrases. And I've put that together in a term that I call the awakened way. And it's just a way for all of us to live. It's not a it's it's a focus for how to live our life the awakened way it brings such peace and the the foundation of it is that we are pure awareness living this human form right now but we're so much more than this human form and we're part of one big web connecting all that is and we find our way home our true home our pure state of awareness through the heart. So everything that we've been talking about today can be, I hate to word, use the word packaged, but let's say put together, understood under this umbrella term of the awakened way. So I would invite people to go to theawakenedway.org, which just lands you on a separate page on my website, but just to review the information there that sums up what we've been talking about and When we make it our daily practice to attune to higher consciousness and set the goal of remembering who we are, then our life truly flows. We just stop hitting walls. We find ourselves more peaceful like you and I were talking about. And life does become joyous no matter what's going on. We have trust. We have faith. Even through the hard times. I I agree. I'm excited to look at theawakenedway.org. Yeah. Great. And then, and for those, go ahead. Yeah. Well, those who are grieving, the best advice I can give at this time, besides going to the heart and thinking thoughts of gratitude, is find a way to get outside of yourself. We talked about going within, but if we're going to be here in human form, it's all about relationship and connecting with some other being. So even if that's helping animals or helping someone else, by by connecting with the heart of someone or something else, it takes our focus off of the ego, which is always where we find pain. And we do realize we're so much more than just our story. If you're in pain, if you're hurting, you're trapped by the story. The story is where the ups and downs happen, but you're so much more than this drama you're living. You're a beautiful light and that's what we have to find within ourselves and sometimes connecting with others at the heart is the fastest way to find that well said and i do know just even on the study of grief and what happens to our body chemistry and things when we can take the focus off ourself and make a difference for another or being in the present moment or being with somebody we love or taking a walk outside all yep. those kind of things, they really do help shift that brain chemistry and ease us through the grieving process. So it helps on so many different levels. Mm-hmm. Good words, sister. Good words. Now, you yeah. are going to be talking at several different things that I mentioned at the beginning. I just like to go through those because I know personally, I've, I've been in one of your workshops and You're just regular. You're a great person. You're easy to understand. You've been there and you're lovely to be in a workshop with. So (laughs) your next one, July 13th through 14th, 2019, of course, somebody might be listening to this in the year 2022. (laughs) So they can go back to your website to see (laughs) where you're at. Yeah, but you'll be with Suzanne Wilson in Washington, D.C., you say, right? Right. We have a great synergy, the two Suzannes. There's so many similarities in our stories. It's stunning, not just our names. And so we we go back and forth teaching people how to connect with their guides. And we've done this three times already. So it's a guaranteed winner of of a workshop because people have wonderful connections, enjoy the energy and learn lots of tools to take with them. So looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And then the Omega Center for me is the place that I first, it was my entryway into this whole world of everything I'm into now. I've been there several times. It's in Rhinebeck, New York. It's a beautiful retreat center in the woods. And oh, if I could be there, I would. 
I love well, it. Well, what's lovely about that is it's in residence, resident, mm-hmm. residence, <laughs> because we get to sleep there, eat together, and just really enjoy learning how to make the connection. I'll be leading people through expanded states of awareness to do those writing exercises we talked about. I will also be channeling my guide, Sanaya, in the evening. That's that's for anybody that's at Omega that weekend. So that'll be fun. Yeah, there's always different courses going on. And then you eat, everybody Mm -hmm. eats in the same main big room and you yep. meet people for, that are on different courses and you can walk through mm-hmm. nature. I've seen so many deer floating around on the paths and there's a beautiful lake and it's a beautiful time of year. Wow. That's great. That's really great. And then you and I will both be at the IAMS conference. I think that's pretty cool. That's August 29th I through September 1st. I grew up right 1st. near there. Did you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Right near Valley Forge. So I know the area so well. It'd be fun to be back. Yeah. I, I stepped on you when you were saying the dates. What are the dates again? They're, uh, <laughs> August, August 29th through September 1st. And I've not been to that conference. Were you there? Oh, you are going to love yeah. it. Yeah, I think this will be my fourth time. I've been a keynote speaker with them. I'm so thrilled. I was their first medium they ever brought in, and they were nervous. Because it's a very, they have scientists and doctors Mm -hmm. that usually speak and, oh, they went out on the limb to bring me in and they were so pleased because um, I'm not (laughs) woo-woo. Woo-woo is relative, (laughs) you know, And, and we bring in a lot of evidence, but their conferences have so many fascinating speakers and they and this, but yet, even though they get scientific, they're still very heart based and it's a wonderful time to network with others who are on this path. Yes, it, and my great. talk that I'm giving yep. there, oh, the talk my keynote speech is called "Magnificent You," and I've given this around the country a few places, and it's a, it's just an eye opener. Plus, I get to do a workshop as well, so I'm honored to go back again. And this conference is for all. You don't have to have had a near death experience to go. Oh, no. It's for Mm-mm. anybody who's just interested in the afterlife. And then also our friend Suzanne again, Suzanne and Suzanne. And Kathleen Malone are putting on the Soul Summit Scottsdale, which kind of morphed from we've had the AREI Symposium. And although this isn't brought by AREI, it's um, definitely blessed by AREI, um, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, because it ties in not just evidence of the afterlife, but also living a powerful life. So that's the Soul Summit mm-hmm. Scottsdale. Do you want to speak a few words about that? Because I think yeah, that's a great I event can't wait coming for up. This one. Mm-hmm. Can't wait, because um, my talk for this one is what's love got to do with it? If this conference is about living a high vibration life, the answer is Everything. Love has everything to do with it. Now, I have a short video on YouTube with the same title, but this is goes way beyond that uh, in the fact that love is the highest vibration. And when we can align with that vibration, that's that flow we've been talking about. So the, the extended workshop that I'm doing after the, the keynote speech at that conference is the Awaken Way to explain in greater depth how to live that life in accordance with who we are and why we're here. And then I also get to channel Sanaya there. I say get to, because for me, it's such an an honor and a blessing to share that energy, that experience with others. So I'm excited. Yes, as you should be. And (laughs) it is an experience for sure to know and love you. And then to hear Sanaya speak or those who speak through Sanaya, because it's a team right? Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. And it's an it's a palpable experience for those people see auras that have never seen auras and see them around me. And people some have even been physically healed in the presence of that energy. One woman came into one of the sessions with she'd had facial paralysis for 33 years, and it vanished forever during that session. Oof. Amazing. Yeah. Very validating. It's so great because I feel even with this show, Suzanne, I can see just how it's shifting and not that we always talk about evidence of the afterlife, but just more and more and more. It's about living a powerful life because if, you know, and I acknowledge and thank the listeners who have been on 
the journey because this is now episode 316. So that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, over Good four for years. You. Thanks. Thank you so much. But it really is that's about a commitment. It is living a good life, a great life, expanding our consciousness, living in wonder. There are so many great experiences yet for each one of us to discover. And I think Soul Summit Scottsdale and who you're being and what you're doing. And I mean, I love finding out about these things myself, but it's just giving us the next, next bar, next part of our journey. And it's rewarding. And There's the love. Fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's, that's okay. it. People think, people think, oh, I'm going to have an awakening and that's it. Or I'm going to get enlightened and that's it. No, the great thing is, it's ever onward, ever upward. And it just keeps getting better. It doesn't mean there aren't bumps in the road. No, but always once bumps. You've tasted, once you've tasted who we really are, how powerful this force is that breathes us, and that it is guiding us, and that it, we are not left alone when we face challenges, then, then you really can be enthusiastic about the future. I love it. I love you. And I thank you. <laughs> thank you. Love you too. Thank you for Thanks being for having me today. on the show. Yeah, it's great to reconnect. And I know I'll get my eyes right thank on you. you soon. But I really yeah. do from everybody who's listening, appreciate you for all that you've done. And you really are an inspiration to me about spreading the word and developing yourself and you continue going after your passions and learning more and then you get you share them and through all the various ways you do thank you for that you're welcome thank you Mm -hmm. most welcome and for our listener thank you for spending this hour with suzanne and myself oh suzanne best your website is let's just say it in your voice uh SuzanneGeesman.com or TheAwakenedWay.org. Very good. And you're, how do we find you on Facebook? That would also be Facebook.com slash Suzanne Geesman. And then there's also the weekly radio show, Messages of Hope with UnityOnlineRadio.org. Oh, I forgot about that, but we go to <laughs> UnityOnlineRadio.org. Yeah. And your there's website. a link through my website. Yeah, it, it's all yeah. happening on your website. Great. And our listener, thank you for taking the time to be here. And it's just great. I hope you're smiling as I am and thinking about life that there's more to be discovered. But the entryway is the awakened way and quieting our mind, being in the present moment, all those great things, shifting our view. And I'm so grateful that I have that 3D image <laughs> next to my bed, just to remind me that there's a world. Well, we, instead of saying world within a world, I'm part of a world that's so much bigger than my understanding. And the out, the afterlife is not outside somewhere. I think it's all part of this just changes different shift in our focus. So, Boy, that's it. Yeah. Excellent. I want to invite all to go to our home base, which is we don't die radio.com. And now you can find 316 episodes and some uh, freebies like a very healing audio called how to survive grief. It says several chapters from my book, but it's actually the whole book once you start reading and a PDF about my reasons to believe in the afterlife. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and I'm always so happy I get to be your host on We Don't Die Radio and talk to great people like Suzanne Giesman. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that you are loved. Your life here on earth is important, and you are one of a kind. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. (music) 